motion. We are now recording. I'm going to intro the show right now. Hey, 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 what's up, man? It is the Sunday Night Edition. Thank you for joining us. We are always excited to have you on board our show, talking, speaking, doing your thing, explaining the truth that is in your heart. And on our show, everybody has an opinion. We don't consider one person right or another person wrong. We don't talk about the politics. We don't consider that you're a Democrat, a Republican, independent, a Christian, a Buddhist, a non-believer. That's not the point. The point is, is that everybody has a voice and this is an opportunity for you to speak your truth. So with that being said, I want to introduce my guest. I'm going to start with a guest that's been with us the most often so far. Please welcome Ginger Snap. Hello. <laughs> um, I'm a musician and a composer. That's sure she is. At least that's what she says. Yes, she is. No, she's a fabulous musician. If you haven't heard her, make sure you check her out. My next guest that's been with us equally as long, almost, almost, she can't be equally because I just said the gender was the most. So almost as equally is Nadia. Nadia has been with us several times. Nadia Bless is in the house. Nadia, how you doing? Dorland? Hi, everybody. I'm good. Thank you for having me. That's very tame for her. She will get more fired up, I promise that. <laughs> and then <laughs> we have also my guest, who is equally as fired up as Nadia. Lorraine Soul is back on the show. Lorraine, how are you doing, darling? I'm doing very well. It's so good to be back. You know, I love being on the show. <laughs> yeah, well, we love having you, too. I never noticed you had a tattoo on your shoulder. Tattoos. Lots, lots of tattoos. Well, I can't get up and get undressed in front of everyone, but if you want to see that, you can go on my Instagram at Lorraine. Exactly. Lorenzo. That's a, that's another show. We we charge for that show. Uh, <laughs> what's this tattoo all about here? What is it? What is this? So this one was actually my first one and it says, I want, I can, I will. And it has a cherry blossom because that was my favorite and I want to get, I did on it as well. Okay, and that's a good lead into the show. So let's get it started. The first question that I have for everyone on our panel tonight is the obvious elephant in the room. Is coronavirus for real? Well, I guess I'll start out. I, <laughs> um, so I um, am one of those people that believes that corona stems from whole plethora of, of different things. I don't deny the existence of the illness because I know people who personally have it. But I think that there are a lot of things that people have, you know, been picking up on um, that kind of sees a little bit of orchestration, even if it's just putting fear into the people um, that I feel that many people have started to take into consideration that they haven't before. But I'll leave it at that for now, I guess. <laughs> Anybody else? I believe it's it's real. I definitely believe it's real. I believe it's it's very relevant. I believe it's um probably bigger um than, you know, I mean, the media really blows things up and and like I'm like reading certain things like one day it'll be like, "Oh, coronavirus numbers are growing." And then the next day it's like, "Oh, we're opening up the world again." So it's like <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what are we doing here? <laughs> What's really going on? Where's you know the ticket? <laughs> if I plan it, oh, it's closed. But right. we are still accepting tickets. <laughs> <laughs> right. What about you, Ginger Snap? You got a thought on this? I sometimes I don't know what it really is. I think it's a mix of everything. I think on some level that it does exist, and then I think it also exists on the other level that completely opposite of what people think and I don't think that we ever get a truthful answer because when you have people like the media they only give one side there's never any debates I don't think that that should make any sense to anybody why no one debates anything it's all we all have all the answers and that's it so we don't know we don't know the other sides now, you brought up a good point, which is the media. In this whole coronavirus uh, situation, we'll call it, the media keeps playing a part and the media keeps coming up in this. Do we really believe that the media has so much power over us that they could shut down all our businesses and all of our uh, activities all over the world because the media took one little thing, one small thing and blew it up into such a big hype? I feel like the media is just as much a business as anything else. I mean, a negative story sells so quickly. And then 
a pandemic, of course, I can already like see the newscasters and they're like, quick, we had something like really yeah, exciting. Right. We've got to go report on it now. It's not usually something exciting and positive, but I feel like if they can continue to lengthen the story in whatever way they choose to do that, whether it be through fear or like exaggerations, like they had hospitals from Italy that they were broadcasting and saying that they were in New York and stuff. And then in the pictures, like all the machines were shut off and stuff. There's been a whole lot of dishonest journaling that's been going on, or journalism, I should say, that's been happening. And it makes it kind of hard to trust your sources, you know? Mm. Anyone else? On the media? Sorry, my, my ear pods died at the wrong time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> your, thoughts, your thoughts on the media pandemic? I, uh, I think the media is a freaking pandemic in of itself. I think um, the media is a joke. And um, yeah, you said, you know, that, that it has the power to like just maneuver everybody into one direction. And like Ginger, Ginger, you made like a really, really, really good point saying that nobody debates anything like that is just like so true and it's so sad like there's so many people involved and nobody has anything else to say like nobody objects to it like nobody nobody has a different thought a different opinion i find myself a lot lately like what the hell why does everybody just follow the hype man mm. so the media is the hype man in my yeah, I agree. You know, what's interesting about the media and journalism in general is like, if you look at this situation that happened with pandemic, before that, there was like a, um, a an impeachment going on, and every single thing was impeachment. Then it was coronavirus, and every single thing was coronavirus. And then there was a racial tension and uh, protest, and every single thing was about the protest. And they always do the same thing. They're like, we have this horrific video. I'm going to tell you in advance, it's horrible, people. You, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to make you sick to watch it. Here it comes. And it's like, why are you playing on the worst fears, the worst that we have going on? You're always broadcasting that. So let me go to the next question. With regard to coronavirus, what would you say has changed your life the most about the pandemic, for good or for bad? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I think it's kind of been interesting to see the social changes, especially in people's interactions with you, like out in the world with uh, masks and stuff that they're requiring at some places. Um, I think it's, it's really kind of started to make you like it started to make people enemize each other because they don't necessarily follow the same even like beliefs of what is going on around them. So it makes it difficult to work in tandem with everyone around you when none of you are really certain of the solid facts of the situation around you. And that uncertainty makes it really easy to distrust everyone, you know, in your vicinity. So um, it kind of, I feel like it's kind of alienated people more than anything. Um, mm -hmm. And just in my personal observations. Mm -hmm. I would think it'd be strange for people like the people who are working jobs and have to wear a mask and they see five customers come in with a mask, 20 customers come in without a mask. Like I happen to be in an area right now in Southern California where right down the street, there's a lake. And so yesterday uh, on a Saturday afternoon, everybody was at the lake and maybe 5% of those people were wearing masks and everybody else was partying. So it, it becomes very uh, convoluted and complicated to decide, well, what's really going on? Are we under uh, quarantine and are we concerned about a pandemic or are we not? Are we just doing whatever the hell we want to do? You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. So all of that confusion, because people are trying to make sense of why People don't have masks and they're not dying. I don't think that the overall statistics of death, dead people has changed. And you think you'd be stepping over dead bodies with a pandemic. Or at least if you just even leave the media out of it, if you ask your, your friends, um, 
the people close to you, how many people they know who either have it, but not have it, but died, um, that'll give you insight as to what's really going on. And the fact that they, the media, whoever, they say that they're, they're shutting down these places because they wanna help people, but at the same time, other people are turned away because I just had that happen with my dad. He was supposed to have surgery on Friday and he's a veteran. So they closed the veterans hospital, this is in Arizona, and his surgery was canceled twice. And my dad went into the ER and he, had, or, and he had a fever and they sent him home because they didn't want to deal with corona. But my dad didn't have corona, they did the test and then he doesn't get his care. So for people are dying and people, and you know what, the news is never going to talk about how many people die of cancer each day and maybe even SIDS, you know, every, all of these things. If they knew so much about COVID and the vaccines, this world wouldn't be so sick. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, overestimating and underestimating and just ridiculous speculation where it comes to the virus. Like, you mean to tell me I can't go see a dentist? Why? Well, because the dentists are all, you know, all the medical facilities are dealing with COVID but the parking lot's empty. What are you talking about? There's no one, you know what I'm saying? Like I have uh, medical professionals that I speak to and some of them are like, oh my God, we're swamped. I'm just working 16 hours a day because there's so many people coming in that are sick. And then other medical professionals are like, I, they cut my hours. I don't understand why, I, you know, they're only trying to staff us at half staff because they're trying to save money because the government is cutting all of the, um, you know, all of the work opportunities. So it's, it's, it's very, very crazy. Anybody else got a thought on this? Because I'm going to go to another question. Well, me being somebody who actually needs medical attention too, I've, um, I've been put in that very sticky spot myself. I actually moved out here to North Carolina for better medical care and smack in the middle of finding doctors, we go on lockdown and now I haven't even started treatment I haven't even, my, my, my disease hasn't even been <clears throat> acknowledged. Like I had a, a phone call from my doctor here. Mind you, I moved here for better medical care because Las Vegas is a joke. And um, my doctor called me here and he's like, listen, your blood work is fine. There's nothing there. And I'm like, you're not listening to me, dude. You did the same blood work I told you not to. <laughs> and there, there's just like, there, you know that movie scene where they go into the doctor's office and they talk about stuff and they, they see eye to eye and they treat each other like a person? Mm -hmm. There's none of that. You know what I'm saying? Like I have a dental appointment tomorrow and they're going to test me for COVID before I even walk in the building, which is, which I'm like, whatever, do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm one who wears masks and I'm one who's social, just social. So I'm not tripping, but I'm tripping because I'm not able to get, and I'm like in an active flare. I have lupus and um, <clears throat> I'm in an active flare now and a lot. And I can't even really get into active treatment and get better and start to see changes. And, you know, that has a trickle down effect to the mental and emotional health and the well being of me and my children and my household, and there's gonna be so much aftershock for so long. It's scared, that part is scariest to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about Lorraine Soul? You got a thought on that? I was gonna say, have you guys seen like any of the videos? I, f I find it very strange, the videos that have a lot of really valuable information don't get a lot of algorithm. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of videos of nurses in the hospitals saying, they're killing these patients. They're misdiagnosing them. They're like, apparently some guy came in with something that was far to the left of needing a defibrillator and they killed the guy because they declared that he needed a defibrillator and they've been misdiagnosing people and declaring almost all deaths as COVID caused. Yeah. Um, so it's, <sighs> even my nurse friends and stuff like that who are working out in like really hotspot areas like Detroit, they're telling me all the time, like, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. Like the protocols that they're having us do in the hospitals don't even align with what we were trained to do or what we went to school for. Mm. They're, like we have restaurants out here where I live that are handing out boxes of medical masks where people in the hospitals are running out and have to reuse the same mask that you're only supposed to use once all week. Right. So it's, it's, it's kind of weird to see 
how things are prioritized in different areas and like just there just seems to be a lot of dishonesty yes <laughs> a lot of dishonesty yeah. so it um i mean it, I'm, I'm so sorry to hear nadia about your situation because i know that you're one of many right now that are not getting the medical attention that they need and mm-hmm. you know that's <laughs> that's definitely a problem it, our knowledge. it makes it so hard to like just because of what you said about them taking people's lives and misdiagnosing them like I sit here in agony, like I don't want to go to the hospital. I'm not going to the hospital because if I go to the hospital, I, I may just never come home. And like, that's like, sometimes like back, you know, back when I first got diagnosed, sometimes <clears throat> the hospital was literally like my comfort because nobody understands, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So it would be like my comfort spot to go and get relieved and to get some understanding. So that is some sad stuff. I've, I heard about the numbers of look at the deaths that the death certificate that they're not giving out death certificates on, unless it has COVID on it, and and this is not the actual cause of death. Now I want to chime in on that. I I am uh, definitely not a medical doctor. Most of my friends would uh, attest to that. But here's the thing that I learned or I heard anyway was that death certificates in 2020 that say COVID somehow the medical facilities are getting, uh, the, the number that I heard was $3,300 per person that they diagnose or that they, so, that they say died of COVID. Do you guys believe that's true? I mean, that's what I heard and I've heard it from more than one person. Do you believe that they're getting money for the people that they say died of COVID? You know what? <laughs> If you can't understand how to follow the money, which most people don't, it's a lot of shadow in the government and whatever the government entity really is. So you just follow the behaviors of people and you listen to how they talk and what they say, and you listen to how many sides they have. And then you start to understand that you don't need to know the exact amount of money and exactly what Corona is. You can figure out whether or not these people are lying or not and just use your intuition. I almost feel like they don't have a plan for a cure. Mm-hmm. I, I also, I mean, this is just a, maybe this is just a personal perception of mine, but I'm one of those people that believes that they've had a cure for cancer and they've had it for years and they're not releasing it because so much, you know, medical treatments make money. I wouldn't doubt at all that they're getting a paycheck, you know, because yeah. shit. That's I actual mean, facts though, but that's, yeah. that's facts. Like we know there's a cancer cure. We know that. And we know there's a cure for AIDS forever, forever. Mm. Do you believe, this is the next question, do you believe that the government has done a fair, good, or shitty job of handling the pandemic and the coronavirus? It's not even, stop smiling. It's not a funny question. Oh, Why that's because it's sure is a circus. We're in a circus and we're being led by a clown. Somebody help us. (laughs) I swear, I just, I feel honestly, I mean, maybe everyone else feels this way too, but that agenda that they got going on in the background is becoming more and more evident every day because they're getting desperate at this point to convince people to be afraid. And, uh, I've seen, man, I just wish that I could just put like video after video after video that I've shared that won't get any foot traffic. (laughs) So much (laughs) valuable information about this stuff. Um, But I, I, especially with Facebook teaming up with like fact checkers and stuff and actually taking down information that's not inaccurate about COVID simply to keep pushing the like misinformation about it. That's scary as well, knowing that in cahoots with the government, we have people like Zuckerberg and Gates and stuff like that that are kind of helping to just progress the fear. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyone else on that? No one? Everyone? How many people believe that it was a coincidence that the coronavirus happened? during an election year. Oh yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
Oh yeah. Yeah, it doesn't just always happen, kind of, sort of. <laughs> like we always have something going on in their election. Like, damn, this seems scripted, damn near. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Interesting. We missed, we missed the casting call, though. We always miss it. I don't know why or how. We're like I'm so connected with all the actors' pages and, and <laughs> all the casting forums, and I just don't understand how I keep missing these casting calls. Yeah, it's a, it's a true thing, huh? What's the worst part of your stay-at-home order? What's been the worst part of that for you, having to stay home? For me, um, I realized that my children uh, have a medical problem uh, with their hearing. It seems they only hear daddy when he's yelling about, anyway, that's another story, but I'm trying to, you know, if daddy's yelling, they hear that real good. But if daddy just asks them to pick something up, for some reason, they can't hear that. They just don't hear it. I don't know what's up with that. That wasn't apparent when school was in session. They were hearing just fine when they were at school, but now. Yeah. No, really. What's been the worst part of pandemic for you? Uh, going to gender snap. What's been the worst part of the stay at home order? What do you hate most about it? Well, I still go out. I suppose I just rebel. No, <laughs> I said, you know what? I like to watch um, the interaction of people because then I get to know the state of the world without having to listen to the one sided one story one path media right okay. and so I, I just i don't i don't know i don't like wearing the masks i don't i definitely don't i i won't but i do and when i go to the va i have to but it's a hospital so it's not that bad but yeah i just i don't believe it is what it is that's why not because i want to kill people because i've heard people oh my goodness another the, the part i hate is watching people arguing and attack each other because then if you think you have a valid argument or debate or communication it seems their communication just breaks down and they just become assholes because instead of actually talking about the subject they just start attacking your character because people that don't know how to talk about something they just start attacking you mm -hmm. so that's why you can't you can't talk to people when they're angry or mean Mm -hmm. It's like we went through a whole phase like where, same thing with racism, where all you had to do was say you supported the police and people would jump all over you like, what the police is a white man and white man is crazy. It's like, you know, calm down, calm down. I'm just, I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm just saying that I support police, you know. Anyone else got a thought on what was the worst, what's been the worst thing about the lockdown? Besides my kids not listening to me? Um, I would, besides the whole medical situation, um, not being able to explore my, my new living situation, the areas surrounded. Um, I got a massage today, like a private in-home massage. Yeah. And before he walked in my house, he took my temperature. <laughs> I felt so weird. I, was, I opened my door like, Regular Ray last me. I open the door in my robe and I'm like, ooh, bougie, bitch, bougie. And he's like, doo, 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 doo. and I'm like, what is that? Oh my God, this is so weird. <laughs> that is so just right. That is weird. Yeah. It's like dating, dating in 2020. <laughs> Yeah, it's just been weird, the adjustment, the adjustment, like going to the store. Like, I don't mind keeping my distance from people. That's always been great, but, <laughs> <That's always> been <laughs> great. you know, just stay away. Yeah, it's cool with me. <laughs> Lorraine, so what do you got to say about this? I mean, out where I live, I kind of have like, um, I live in kind of the almost hillbilly-ish part of Michigan where like, they're nice, you know what I mean? But none of them give a fuck about anything going on. They're all basically on the same boat where they're just like, pandemic, uh, you know, if you're afraid, you know, don't come out kind of thing. But it, it hasn't affected my life much except having to pick up my pizza off the front porch <laughs> instead of getting <laughs> So <laughs> that's about it as far as where I'm at because everyone out here is basically on the same page. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, so the next question is, um, it seems like it's a simple question, but think about it before you answer. Are you afraid 
uh, for humankind out of this? I mean, are, is this Corona going to be around for the duration of our kids' lives and their kids' lives? I mean, are you afraid when you think about it? Are you scared for the humanity? I think I'm more afraid of other people yeah. <laughs> more than anything. Uh, you know, like we were talking about how, how everyone is just kind of enemizing each other like Ginger was talking about how you can't get into discussions on Facebook or any other media, you know, for that matter, without it really being about black and white, right and wrong kind of thing. And I feel more than anything that the, the social pandemic that's coming out as a result of this, because everyone, of course, wants to be confident in the information that they've acquired, but you know, like uh, Ginger, I believe, is the one who brought this up earlier. Like, we don't have, like, any real dependable facts. Like, you're getting facts from here, there, and everywhere else, and they all kind of, like, contradict each other. And so you have a lot of people who truly do have good intentions, but they want to educate you without truly knowing what's going on themselves, and that creates a lot of friction, especially when there's so many different like truths about it out already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? That's really good. Absolutely. She is good. She is good. I'll give her that. She is good. Yeah, I think I think it's gonna, like I said earlier, domino effect. Um, I I believe our children are being affected, you know, greatly and. We won't know that outcome for a while. I guess once they go back to school and they start to act out, we're not. You know what I mean? But I, I definitely think that, you know, with the lack of medical care for people who need just regular care and, you know, just the, all the stuff that's been put on the back burner, you know what I mean? All of that stuff has to be addressed eventually. And it's going to be like, if you've waited waited forever to pay your bills you still got to pay that <laughs> you still got to you still got to pay those dues and yeah i definitely think that maybe not like forever but this is definitely a historical situation it's definitely going to be spoken about written about and so forth so, so on yes. we have time for two more questions if you guys if everyone answers quickly okay. the first question uh did you have something on the last last thought if not, I'll go to the next question. Um, yes, no? Maybe it's there. Okay. Say it. No? Uh, I just, okay. Well, the truth really, they, that takes time. So they come up with these things very quickly saying they know what it is and they know what it is and they got this. They don't. They don't got anything. And that's the end of the show. Thank you. No, I'm playing. No, that's good. <laughs> no, that's no, that's the valid no, but that is basically what it is. It's nobody knows. I mean, it's something that's never happened to us in a hundred years. How does anybody have a solution? Here's our, my next question before we run out of time. The next question is: do you think what we're going through right now is part of a biblical prophecy? or mentioned in some other of the gospels that we are supposed to be going through this? Like, are we going through Armageddon right now? Is this part of Book of Revelations? Do you think this is part of mankind's ultimate destiny? I, I think that everything has already existed before, and it's not a biblical prophecy, but it is just stating everything that's already happened. So that book is written afterwards and then things just keep on happening. I don't know. But I don't know, that's just my, that's just my point of view. But that's why you're here. We like your opinion. Anyone else? No one? Okay, then we'll go to uh, our next question, will be our last question. This will be the last for the show, probably. We'll try to make it the last question, which is if you were the person in charge of making decisions for the world. What would you have done differently in this last five months as far as how the pandemic affected everyone? What, what decisions would, would you have made do you think would have made a difference? Well, I wouldn't have lied <laughs> to my people, first of all. Uh, like, you know how they tried to say that the virus could survive on metal surfaces for like nine days? And I'm like, right. 
Let's go back to middle school, y'all. Let's recall <laughs> that viruses are not, in fact, airborne and cannot travel as such. Thank you so much. It can only survive with its host. It has been proven in Supreme Court six times and won. Yeah. Uh, I just, I feel like people need to start remembering a few things, um, but I, I definitely wouldn't have, wouldn't have done any of this. <laughs> <laughs> All of it was wrong, to be honest. Like, I probably would have never released it. I mean, I wouldn't have let it, let it get released. I would have been like, no, no, get that paperwork off my desk. <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I feel like when you're faced with a situation and when you just kind of feel like you would have done something, I, I just think it's a totally different thing. So I really, I, I surprise the hell out of myself all the time. So I really don't have an answer. Mm. <laughs> hey, we're almost out of time. We're actually going to finish this show on time. It looks like, how do we reach you guys on social media? Thank you for being the guests on the show today, by the way, you all are wonderful. I love your insights. That's why I wanted you on the show. You guys are all amazing, incredible people. Uh, how do we reach you on social media? We want to stalk you. Y'all go first. <laughs> you can find me at Nadia blessed N A D I A B L E S T on Facebook and the same spelling with 718 on Instagram. And that's what's up. <laughs> Anyone don't want to be followed on social media? If you don't, that's <laughs> fine. Hey, don't worry about how to find them on social media. You can find me and I will get the message to them. Take my word for it. They'll get the message, okay? <laughs> Hey, listen, it's been the Sunday Night Edition, your boy Ace Michaels, my fabulous panel of guests. And uh, all I can say is, man, keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, but don't believe everything you see. And definitely, definitely do not believe everything you hear. Thank you guys for being on the Sunday Night Edition. And thank you guys for watching, sharing and liking. <laughs>